Welcome to another edition of the Bible Speaks. You know, this program is so unique. What makes this program so unique? You actually have brothers on the set that's teaching the Bible. My name is Jeremiah, and I'll be your teacher for the day. And my reader will be Brother Sean. And you know, we always deal with the Bible by subject and title. So today's title is, The Lamb is Gone. But the lion come, because when you talk about Jesus, Jesus then played some roles that people don't understand. You know, one of the roles that Jesus played is the lamb. And another role he going to play in the future is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I'm going to tell you this right now. A lamb and a lion have two different mentalities. Two different mentalities. So what we going to do, let's look at the lamb part first because the lamb then came and died for your sins and ascended back to heaven. So let's look at the lamb part of this first. Let's go to Revelations the 13th chapter. And we need to find out when was this lamb slain? Was this lamb slain from the foundation of the world? We need to pay attention and take a look at it. Let's go to Revelation 13, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. This is during the time of the reign of the Antichrist. Go ahead and read. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Sometime or another in the future, it's going to be given to the Antichrist to do what? To make war with the saints. Go ahead and read. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Go ahead. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. He said, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Go ahead. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You mean this lamb that came, which represented Jesus, was slain from what? The foundation of the world. This lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. So if this lamb was slain from the foundation of the world, we need to find out who is this lamb then. Let's go to Exodus 12. Let's go to Exodus 12. We're going to find out who is this lamb. Exodus 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Exodus 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 3, and this is the Passover, and here go this lamb that's going to die on the Passover. Exodus 3, uh, 12 and verse 3. Go ahead and read. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Hey, he say, take a lamb for a house. This is the Passover. We finna kill the Passover right here. Go ahead and read. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Let's look and see where how this lamb supposed to be. Go ahead, Sean. Your lamb should be without blemish. I mean, this lamb have to be without what? Blemish. It can't have a spot on him. It got to be sin free. 
Go ahead and read. A male of the first year. Oh, yeah. And another thing that this lamb has to be, it has to be a male of the first year. Jesus was sin free. He didn't have a blemish. And he is the first male of Mary litter. See, this lamb is pointing towards Jesus, people. He didn't play plenty roles. Go ahead and read. You should take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And you know what's so funny, Shine? You know what's so funny about this? Jesus died on the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. This oh. is who this lamb is pouring towards. Go ahead and read. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two sides of the of two sides posts and on the upper door post of the houses where they shall eat it. He said, take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein you shall eat it. So you know where you're going to hide that? You're going to hide right under the blood of that lamb. And I'm going to tell you, even today, you still hiding under the blood of that lamb, people. Hey, you, where you hiding at? I'm going to hide under the blood of the lamb. Drop down to verse 11. Go ahead and read. And thus shall you eat it with your loins gritted, your dirty. Shoes, dirty, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it. In haste, it is the Lord's Passover. And let's see what he going to do. Go ahead. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And you want to be an Egyptologist. And he's smiting all the gods of Egypt. Go ahead and read. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood. Oh, uh, he didn't say when I see the Israelite. He said when I see the blood. So what do you have to hide at, people? You have to hide under that blood of that lamb. He said when I see the blood, go ahead. I will pass over you. Oh, uh, you mean that's where the word Passover come from. He said when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. And you know what? Faith is right here. Because if you didn't have faith, you didn't put the blood over your side post and on your upper door post. So faith is right here, people. You always had faith in the Old Testament. Here it is right here. Hey, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to come through the land of Egypt, and when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over that house. And you the house, people. Go ahead and read. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. Let's go to 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter 1. Let's go to 1 Peter 1. Make sure we understand that that lamb been slain from what? The foundation of the world. Adam brought Jesus on the set to be crucified. 1 Peter 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 18. 1 Peter 1 and 18. Let's make sure we understand that lamb been slain from the foundation of the world. Go ahead and read. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible, corruptible things as silver and as gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father. He said for as much as you know that you ain't been redeemed. With corruptible, corruptible, corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain lifestyle by the tradition of your fathers. Go ahead. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Oh, uh, but with the precious blood of Christ. So now where you got to hide at now? Under the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Go ahead and read. Who really was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Oh, uh, he was foreordained before what? The foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world, people. When Adam ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he brought Jesus on the set. He the one that brought Jesus on the set. And this lamb was slain from what? The foundation of the world. Verse uh, 20 again. Go ahead. 
who really was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. That's good. Let's go to St. John 4, because this is the Samaritan woman at the well, and she said, I know Messiah coming, and when he come, he going to teach us all things. Because a lot of people say, Jesus ain't never said he was the Messiah. Well, we going to see if he said he was the Messiah or not. First John, St. John 4. St. John 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 19. St. John 4, and let's pick it up at verse 19. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that thou art prophet. Because the Lord had told her about the five husbands she had, and the one she had now ain't hers. And she said, I perceive you a prophet. He said, Go ahead. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is a place where men are to worship. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe in me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Go ahead. Ye worship, you know not what. Hey, we can say that to a whole lot of people. You worship. You know not what. Go ahead. We know what we worship. He said, we know what we worship. This Jesus talking. Go ahead. For salvation is of the Jews. He said, salvation is of who? The, the Jews. Jews. Go ahead. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Go ahead. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Go ahead. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. He she, after he said all that to her, he, she said, I know that Messiah cometh. Go ahead. Which is called Christ. Uh-huh. When he is come, he will teach, he will, he will tell us all things. He said, when the Messiah come, he going to tell us what? All, all things. things. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh unto thee am he. Oh, Jesus said, I that speaketh unto thee am he. Jesus is letting the Samaritan woman know that I am the Messiah. I'm the one that all the brothers in the Old Testament wrote about. I'm the Messiah. So Jesus is straightly, plainly telling the woman that he is the Messiah. But now we need to find out when the Messiah get here, what's supposed to happen to the Messiah. Let's see what's supposed to happen to the Messiah. Let Daniel talk to us. Let's go to Daniel 9. Let Daniel talk to us. Let Daniel talk to us and let us know about the Messiah. What's supposed to happen to the Messiah when he get here. Daniel 9. And we're going to pick it up at verse 24. Daniel 9 and 24. Go ahead and read. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people uh -huh. and upon thy holy city to finish the transgressions and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Go ahead. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the prince, shall be 70 weeks and three scores. In two weeks, the streets shall be built again, and the walls even in troublesome times. Go ahead. And after three scores and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. But who did he die for then? When the Messiah come, who is Jesus, he had to be cut off, he say, but not for himself. So if he ain't dying for himself, who he dying for? He dying for the sins of the people. Go ahead and read. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Go ahead. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Hey, he say he go confirm the covenant with many for one week. A week is seven days. Go ahead. And in the midst of the week, he shall call the sacrifice and oblates to cease. Uh, he say, in, in the midst of the week, 
He's going to cause sacrifices and oblations to cease. So when the Messiah come, the Messiah had a weak minister. He had to be cut off in the midst of his ministry in the middle of a week. And he going to cause what to cease? The sacrifices sacrifice and, oblations. and oblations. It didn't say the Ten Commandments. It said sacrifices and oblations. He go cause the cease. Go ahead. And for the overspreading of the abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. Uh huh. And that determined shall be poured upon all, uh, poured upon the desolate. And so now the Messiah had to come, and he had to die for who? He had to be cut off, but not for himself. Jesus died for who? He died for the people. He was the Messiah that was wrote about to come. For all the people who don't think Jesus is the Messiah. If you waiting on the Messiah, your Messiah had to come and die in the midst of the week. Let's keep going. Let's just look at this Messiah. Let's go to Isaiah 53. Let's just look at this Messiah that he had to be cut off. Isaiah 53, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 53. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Take your time, Big Shine. Everything going to work smooth. Isaiah 53 and verse 1. Let's look at this Messiah. Go ahead and read. Who has believed our report? A very few people believe this report. He said, who had believed our report? Go ahead. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Go ahead. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, uh -huh. as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form, no calmness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Yeah, he ain't coming and look at all handsome. It ain't no beauty we gonna desire him. Go ahead and read. He is despised and rejected of men. Wait a minute. They love him now. You know why they love him now, Sean? Because he did. He said, he is despised and rejected of man. And if he came preaching what he was preaching, he would be despised and rejected of man even in this generation. Go ahead and read. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. Go ahead. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. He said, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Go ahead. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. And go to Messiah again. He go that lamb being slain from the foundation of the world. He say, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Go ahead. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for who iniquities? Our iniquities. Our iniquities. Go ahead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Go ahead. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Oh, you mean the Lord have laid upon that lamb. That was slain from the foundation of the world. He said, the iniquity of us all. He the one that died with, hey, if you smart enough to put yourself under the blood, he died for your iniquity. Go ahead and read. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. He is brought as what? A, a lamb. lamb to the slaughter. Go ahead and read. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Go ahead. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. For the transgression of the people was he stricken. I mean, it's all over the Bible about the coming of the Messiah and him dying for the sins of the people. That's why some people who don't believe Jesus died for them, I don't know what book they read. Because they evidently ain't paying attention to this one. Verse uh, 9, go ahead and read. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, 
because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Hey, it wasn't even no deceit in his mouth. Go ahead. Perfect lamb. Go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Hey, it pleased who? The it Lord. pleased the father to bruise the son. Go ahead and read. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Oh, you mean Jesus, when he came and died for the people, he was what? A sin offering? That's why he said he go cause sacrifices and oblations to cease because he was what? A sin offering, people. Go ahead and read. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Wait, how he going to see his seed and prolong his days if he ain't been raised from the grave? Oh, he going to see his seed. He said he going to prolong his days. How he going to do all that? Because he going to be in the grave. He ain't going to be in the grave to decompose like any other man. Go ahead and read. In the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the tra travailing of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquity. Let's keep going. Let's go in the Hebrews 9. Let's go in the Hebrews 9. Show you, you got to come up under that blood, people. You got to come up under that blood of that righteous lamb. Hey, you get baptized in the name of Jesus and hide up under the blood of that righteous lamb. Hey, and when the, everything start hitting the fan, he'll pass over you. That's what I'm talking about. Hebrews 9, and we go pick it up at verse 11. Hebrews 9 and verse 11. Let me show you the sacrifices and offerings. They couldn't do nothing for you. They couldn't do nothing for you. That's just a band-aid not to kill you. Hebrews uh, 9. And let's pick it up at verse 11. Go ahead and read. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Go ahead. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered into, he entered in. To, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Oh, you mean neither by the blood of goats and calves. He said, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Go ahead and read. For if the blood of bulls and of goats in the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge, purge your, purge, purge yours conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He said, how much more shall the blood of Christ? Because that's what you had in that night. You hiding up under the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, because that lamb had to be without blemish and without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Go ahead and read. And for this cause, he is a mediator of the New Testament. Wait a minute. For this cause, he said he is the mediator of what? The, the new, new covenant. See, this new covenant, as individuals getting baptized, that's how you come up under this new covenant. Now, when the Lord gather Israel from wherever they've been scattered at, he going to bring them under the bind of the covenant as a whole. But as an individual, you can come up under the new covenant right now when you get baptized in the name of Jesus. If you get baptized in the name of Jesus, you know what you're doing? You're hiding under that blood. You're hiding under the blood, people. Go ahead. What verse you at? Let verse 15. Pick it up at 15 again. Go ahead and, and read. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Go ahead. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. 
Yeah, he say, and where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Because the testament, the covenant can't go into force as long as Jesus was walking the earth. Go ahead and read. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Oh, you mean to tell me the new covenant went into force after Jesus had died? All during Jesus' ministry, when he healed somebody, what did Jesus say? Go and do the sacrifice that Moses told you to do. But because what? They were still under the old covenant as long as Jesus was living. He said for verse 17 again. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the tester liveth. Well, as long as the testator liveth, hey, you were still under the old covenant. Go ahead. Whereupon well, neither the first testament was de dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he, put, he took the blood of calves and of the goats and with, with water and, to, and scarlet, wool and hyssop, and to and sprinkle both the book and all the people. All you have to do is go into the uh, Exodus 24, and you can see when they came up under the old covenant, they took the blood of them animals and sprinkled on all the people. Hey, go ahead and read. Saying, this is the blood of the testament, which God has enjoined unto you. He said, this is the blood of the covenant, which God have enjoined to you. Go ahead. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And all, almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. He said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And he said and almost all things are by the law purged with what? Purged with blood. He said without the shedding of blood. There's no remission. So, hey, so where is we hiding at? Hiding up under the blood of Jesus. Because when John seen Jesus, John hollered out, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Let's see John hollering that out. Let's go to St. John 1. Let's go to St. John 1. Because that's the role that Jesus played. He played the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And we go get to the lion part too. Because he's going to play another role. And when he played this role, hey, you better hope you under the blood. St. John 1. And let's pick it up at uh, verse 19. St. John 1. Let's pick it up at verse 19 because John doing some baptisms here and the Pharisees sent some people to John to ask him who he was. And they asking him some questions and let's look at his answers. St. John uh, 1 and 19, go ahead and read. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are thou? They, they, they said, the Jews sent the Levites and priests to ask John, who are you? Go ahead and read. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. He said, I am not the anointed one. I'm not the Messiah. Go, I'm not him. Go ahead and read. And they asked him, what then are thou, Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are thou that prophet? And he answered, no. Hey, they asked him, is you Elias? He said, no. He, is you that prophet is to come? He said, no. Go ahead and read. And he answered, no. Then said they unto him, who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet. Isaiah. Hey, and we doing that right now. We telling the people, hey, we we our voice is in the wilderness, and we telling the people, make straight the way of the Lord, as said also the prophet Isaiah. Serve the Lord right. Make straight the way of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said to him, 
Why baptize thou then if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. Go ahead. He it is whom cometh after me is preferred before me, whose shoelaces I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. Go ahead. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and say, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Oh, the next day John see who? Jesus coming unto him, and he say, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. This is that Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Go ahead and read. This is he of whom I said after me cometh a man which is referred before me, for he was before me. Drop down to verse 35, because the next day John going to see him again. Uh, let's see what John going to holler. Go ahead and read. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looked upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Uh-oh, John called them who? The Lamb of God. Hey, who is that Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world? Jesus. None other than Jesus. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 15. I mean 1 Corinthians 5. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5. Let's see who that Passover was. That Passover lamb. 1 Corinthians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. 1 Corinthians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Let's see who that Passover lamb was really pointing towards. 5 and 6, because this lamb that came, he didn't die for your sins. Ain't no sense of looking for the lamb no more. The next role Jesus going to play is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's the next role he going to play. Verse 6, go ahead and read. Your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaveth the whole lump? Go ahead. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So, so Christ, that lamb that was slain on the Passover, you took the lamb on the 10th day, and you sacrificed the lamb on the 14th day. That lamb was who? Representing Christ, Christ all the time, people. That's the role he played. So now, since he played that role, then how are we going to cleanse ourselves? We got to have some kind of cleansing process. Let's go in, uh, uh, let's go to uh, First John. Let's go to First John, the book right before Revelations. Let's go to First John 1, and let's read one verse. We're going to read verse uh, 7. Let's see what cleanses us. One and seven. One and seven. When you get it, go ahead and read. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. In the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanse us from all sin. Oh, so now when you had that, you had that under the blood of Jesus Christ, and it cleanses us from what? All sin. All sins, because you had and where? Under the blood. Oh, you can't hide nowhere else, people. It ain't no other hiding spot unless you get to the wilderness. It ain't no other hiding spot, Shine. So you know what we got to hide at? Under Jesus. the blood of Jesus, bro. That's what you got to hide so. right now. Let's go to Revelations, the seventh chapter. Let's see what John, let's see John, he could talk for himself. Revelation 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Revelation 7 and 13, this 144,000 that came out of the great tribulations. And we need to find out how did they hide themselves. Revelation 7 and 13, go ahead and read. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And which came is they? Uh-huh. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, 
and have washed their robes and made <laughs> made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, you mean to tell me the ones that went through the great tribulations and made it through? He say uh, they uh, made their robes white in the blood of what? Of the Lamb. They hiding up under that Lamb, people. Go ahead and read. Therefore are they before the throne of God uh -huh. and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall, sun, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Go ahead. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne. Who is the lamb that's in the midst of the throne? Jesus. None other than Jesus. Go ahead. Shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. So that's a role that Jesus didn't play. Jesus then played the role of the lamb. The lamb then came, died for your sins, and you know what you had to do? You had to get baptized and come up under the blood of Jesus now because he that lamb if you want to hide yourself. But now, he didn't play that role. Let's look at the other role that he's going to play when he comes, and that is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let's go to Revelations 5. Let's go to Revelations 5. Go to Revelations 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 1. Revelations 5, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Let me show you the other role that he's going to play. Go ahead and read. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Hey, you had the book in the right hand of the Father, and could nobody open the book. He said, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Go ahead and read. Let's see who's worthy to open this book and loosen the seals. Go ahead. Ain't no man in heaven. Ain't no man in heaven. Go ahead. No on earth. No on earth. Neither on the earth. Go ahead. Was able to open the book. Neither to look thereon. Hey, hey, you couldn't open the book. You couldn't even look on the book. That's how bad our iniquity is. We can't even look on the book. Let's see what's going to happen. Go ahead and read. And I wept much. He said, I wept much. Go ahead. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book. Neither to look thereon. Go ahead. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah. The root of David has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Oh, so who is worthy to open this book? The Lion of the tribe of Judah. This is another role that Jesus is going to play. He's going to play the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He the one that's going to open the book. And if Jesus don't open the book for you, you won't get no understanding. Uh -huh. Go ahead and read. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. Oh, you got the lamb, and you got the lion right here. Let's see. We see the lion of the tribe of Judah uh, open the book. Go ahead and read. Stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spears of God, sent forth unto all the earth. Go ahead. And he came and took the book. Out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Hey, the lamb, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. The father, go ahead and read. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayer of the saints. Go ahead. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Wait a minute. But at verse uh, 5, it was the lamb of the tribe of Judah, like the lion of the tribe of Judah that opened the book, right? Yes, sir. But when we get to verse uh, uh, 8, he said, when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb. 
having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. So who took the book? Was it the lion of the tribe of Judah, or was it the lamb that opened the book? Or is they one and the same? One and the same. One and the same. Because he playing dual roles here, people. He playing two roles here. Verse uh, 9 again. Go ahead and read. And they sung a new song saying, Thou worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Drop down to verse 12. Drop down to verse 12. Go ahead and read. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power. Wait a minute. He said worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power. Go ahead. In riches. Uh-huh. In wisdom. Uh-huh. In strength. In honor. In glory. In blessings. In every creature which is in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth, in such as are in the sea, and all that are, are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So now you see Jesus playing two roles. He took the, the lion of the tribe of Judah, took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne, and then later on, it's the lamb that took the book out of the right hand. Jesus is playing both roles. He the, lion, he the lamb. Now nah, he's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let's see what in a lion and a lamb have two different mentalities. I don't care how you kick, how you fuss, how you holler, how you say, oh, Lord, have mercy on me. When that lion come, he is coming to kill. And let's see what this lion going to do when he come. Let's go to Jeremiah 25. Let's see what this lion going to do when he come. And he going to do some killing like the lions do on the movie. Or the lion stories. Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25, and we going to pick it up at verse 32. Jeremiah 25. And we go pick it up at verse 32. Now he played, now he didn't play the lamb part. He didn't came and die for your sins, gave you a chance to come up under the blood of Jesus, up under that the blood of that righteous lamb. But now he's finna play the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he come, make a second coming, this is the role he gonna play. Go ahead and read. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be rise, raised upon from the coast, from the coast of the earth. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other. Oh, he'd say the slain of the Lord at that day go be from one end of the earth even unto the other. Go ahead. Until the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamp lamp, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Oh, the Lord going to do that lion going to do so much killing. It's just going to be like, you ain't going to have time to lament over them. You ain't going to have time to gather them. You ain't going to have time to bury them. They just going to be like dung on the earth. Go ahead and read. How you shepherds? Uh oh, now nah, he got a special thing for you shepherds. He say, how you shepherds? Go ahead. And cry and wail you yourselves in the ashes, you principles of the flock, for the days of your slaughter and of your disperse, dispersion. Uh, dispersion, I'm sorry, are compassed, and ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel. Go ahead. And the shepherds shall have no way to flee, nor the principles of the flock to escape. Hey, you ain't got nowhere to escape now. Go ahead like the Lord ain't watching you. Go ahead and read. A voice of cry of the shepherd. He say the voice of a cry of the shepherds. Go ahead. And the howling of the principles of the flock shall be heard. For the Lord has spoiled their pastures. Go ahead. And the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. He said the peaceable habitations are cut down because of what? 
the fierce, fierce anger, anger of, the Lord. of the Lord. The Lord is angry now. Go ahead, because the Lord said, I've been a long time holding my peace. He said, now nah, I'm going to cry like a travailing woman. And when the Lord come on this, come down and, 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 and judge this man, he going to be crying like a travailing woman. Verse, what verse you at? We on 38 now. 38, go ahead. He has forsaken his covert. As the speak up. Speak he up. has forsaken his covert as the line for Oh, the he said he has forsaken his covert as what? Here come the lion now. And this is what the lion going to do. He said he has forsaken his covert as the lion. Go ahead. For their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressors and because of his fierce anger. Let's go to Revelations 19. Let's go to Revelations 19. We got to get some of this lion in here. Revelations 19, and let's pick it up at verse 11. 19 and 11. When you get it, go ahead and read. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Hey, here comes Jesus. He said, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Here comes Jesus. Go ahead. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. Hey, when the Lord come. He coming to make war, people. That's why he said he have forsaken his covert as the lion. He coming to make war now. Go ahead and read. His, his eyes were as a flame of fire, yeah. and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Oh, he said he got on the vegetable and it's dipped in blood and his name is called what? The Word of God. All he going to do is be hollering. He die, die. Go ahead. In the armies which were in heaven, follow him. You Upon mean to tell me he ain't coming by himself? The armies in heaven followed him. Them angels, go ahead. Him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Go ahead. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Go ahead. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heavens, Come and gather yourselves together unto the sepulchre of the great God. That's why you go have flesh from one end of the earth to the other. You ain't going to have time to lament them. They're going to be like dung on the ground. And what he call all the fowls of heaven, Come and gather yourselves to the great supper of the Lord. Go ahead and read. That you may eat the flesh of kings. That you may, uh oh, here come the lion. That you may eat the flesh of kings. Go ahead. In the flesh of captains, in the flesh of mighty men, in the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, in the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that set upon that set on the, the uh, him that set on the horses and against his, uh, his armies. That's good. Let's keep going. Let's go to Ezekiel 39. Let's just look at how it's going to be. And this is future prophecy here. We talk a future prophecy. Ezekiel 39. And let's pick it up at verse 17. 39, 17. Let me know you're ready. Go ahead and read. And thou, son of man, thus say the Lord God, speak unto every feather owl. And, to and he say, speak to every what? Feather feathered owl. owl. Speak to the birds, the feathered fowls. Go ahead. And to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves and come together. Your, come together. I mean, come, gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice. Hey, he said, come and gather yourself to my what? To my sacrifice. Go ahead and read. On every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel that you may eat flesh and drink blood. You shall, eat, you shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, and of bullocks, and all them 
fat lean a base shine. Go ahead. And you shall eat fat till you be full. He and said you go eat fat till you be full. That's how the lion going to come and do some killing people. Go ahead. And drink blood till you be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Go ahead. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men and with all men of war, said the Lord God. I will set my glory among the heathens, and all the heathens shall see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid upon them. You so see what, how the Lord going to do it when he come back? He going to do some massive killing when he come back. When the lions start attacking, it ain't no stop. The lion going to keep coming. I'm going to skip with Genesis 49 and go to Amos 3. I'm going to skip Genesis 49 and let's go to Amos 3. Amos 3 and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Amos 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. I'm sorry, Amos 3. And let's pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against. You old children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest? When he has no prey. Hey, the lion ain't roaring in the forest when he ain't got no prey. Go ahead and read. Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? No, go ahead. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no, where no gain is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Well, let's look at this lion. He ain't going to roar if he ain't got no prey. But let's give him some prey then, and let's see him roar. Let's go to Isaiah 31. Let's go to Isaiah 31. Let's see him roaring on the prey then. Isaiah 31. And if we move it too fast, just write the scriptures down and go over them at your own convenience. Isaiah 31, and we go pick it up at verse 4. Isaiah 31 and verse 4. For thus said, for thus has the Lord spoken unto me, like as in, like as the lion and the young lion roared on his prey. Oh, now he's fed, he roaring on what? Now he roaring on the prey. He got something to roar over. Go ahead and read. When a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, uh, he, hey, a multitude of shepherds could be called against him. Go ahead. He would not be afraid of their voices. I don't care how you holler. He ain't going to be afraid of your voice. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I honor lion coming now. He ain't going to be afraid of your voice. Go ahead. Nor abase himself. He ain't going to abase himself. Oh, that's Jeremiah. Let me chill out, chill out. That's Jeremiah shine them. Uh-uh. He ain't going to abase himself. Go ahead. For the noise of them, so shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight. For my Zion and for the hills thereof. Oh, he come the Lord and he coming to do what? He coming to fight now. Fight. He coming to fight. Let's see what the Lord going to do when he come and fight. See, that's the part of the role that people don't know about Jesus. They think he just soft and cuddly. That's all he do, soft and cuddly. Hey, he coming, when he come back, people, it's damage control now. He going to do some damage. Let's go to Psalms uh, 110. Let's go to Psalms 110. Psalms 110, let's see him coming and fighting. Psalms 110 and 1, go ahead and read. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou my right hand until I make thy enemy thy footstool. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on thy right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Let's see what he going to do when he make his enemies his footstool. Let's drop down to verse 5. Go ahead and read. The Lord at thy right hand, the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Oh, you mean to tell me it's the Lord at the right hand. It's David's Lord, which is Jesus, that's sitting at the right hand that's going to strike through kings in the day of his wrath. This is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Go ahead and read. 
Verse six. Verse six. Go he ahead. shall judge among the heat among the heathens. He gonna judge among who? The, the heathens. Nations. Go ahead. He shall fill the place with. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. Oh, Jesus going to fill the places with dead bodies because he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he going to kill from one end of the earth even into the other. They ain't going to be able to be lamented. They ain't going to be buried. They going to be dung on the ground. And who going to do it? Jesus going to do it because he going to play the lion of the tribe of Judah. Get yourself under the blood for you can hide from this right here. What verse you at? Still at verse six. Uh, go ahead, verse uh, six. He shall wound the heads over many countries. And that's it. That's verse six. Go ahead. Verse seven. Go ahead, you he, read it. He shall drink, he shall drink of the brock in the way. Therefore, Shall he lift up the head? Let's see who's sitting on the right hand to make sure we understand. Let's go to 1 Peter 3. Let's make sure we understand who's sitting on the right hand. A lot of people don't know who's sitting on the right hand. 1 Peter 3, and let's pick it up at verse 21. Who going to do all that damage? Go ahead and read. The like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us, not the putting away of filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when he was raised from the dead, let's see where he went. Go ahead. Who was gone into heaven. It is on the right hand of God. Of God, angels and authority and power being made subject unto him. So who's sitting on the right hand of Jesus. God? Ain't nothing but Jesus. And who gonna do all that damage? Jesus. This is going to be Jesus because he's going to be playing the lion another role. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Let's go to Jude. The book right before Revelations. Let's go to Jude 1 and let's pick it up at verse 14. When you get it, go ahead and read. And Enoch also the seventh, seventh from Adam prophesied of these sayings. Behold, the Lord cometh with thousands of thousands. The Lord come with ten thousand of his saints. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among, uh, among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. So let's go one other place. Let's go to Isaiah 26 and pick it up at verse 19. And let's see what the Lord going to do when he come. Verse 19, 26 and 19. When you get it, go ahead and read. 26, 19. Go ahead and read. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the door at the borders thereof to the Lord. That's good. Hopefully somebody understood the lesson. Thank you guys for your time. I've been looking, I've been looking searching, trying to find the right way to walk. Stay, Stay beside me, girl. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy, my enemy, my faith and trust, I put all in thee. Put all in thee. Believe you got the world in your hand. World in your hand. You bless me, Lord, I know I can stand. Lord.